All right, we now want to move on to uh, the Middle East, which is one of the areas of most disagreement um, among you. Um, of course, on October 7th, Hamas killed more than 1,400 Israelis and took more than 200 hostages. Israel's military response has left an estimated 25,000 Palestinians dead, according to the Gaza Health Ministry. Congress Member Lee, on October 8th, less than 24 hours after that attack, you called for an immediate ceasefire. Uh, if that happens now, if there is an immediate ceasefire, what's to stop Hamas from retaking control and launching another October 7th? Thank you very much uh, for that question. Yes, I called for um, a ceasefire, a permanent ceasefire. Israel deserves to live in peace with security, free from Hamas and all terrorist attacks. And I'm going to continue to condemn the horrific attacks of October 7th and work to make sure that whatever I can do to ensure that uh, the administration, as it continues this war in Gaza that is ki has killed now at 25,000 people, that is counterproductive to Israel's security. The only way Israel is going to be secure is through a permanent ceasefire. The only way that is going to happen is with a political and diplomatic solution. The path to peace and to a secure Israel and a secure state for the Palestinians, with yet I do believe we have to see the end game and it should be a two state solution. Mm -hmm. Killing 25,000 civilians, it's catastrophic and it will never lead to peace for the Israelis nor the Palestinians. Congressman Schiff, you have not called for a ceasefire. Why do you think that Congresswoman Lee is wrong? Well, first of all, I go back to October 7th, uh, to the brutal murder of 1,200 people. Uh, and not just murder, but rape and torture. Uh, the magnitude of that horror is still shocking to me. Um, no country, after having been attacked by terrorists like Israel was on October 7th, no country could refuse to defend itself. It has a duty to defend itself, and I think the United States should support Israel in defending itself. We also should work with Israel to reduce the number of civilian casualties. And my heart breaks uh, for all the Palestinians who have lost lives, all the families that have lost lives. It's not, in my view, incompatible with human nature to grieve the loss of both innocent Palestinians as well as innocent Israelis. Uh, I support a two-state solution. We have to get back to a road to two-state solution. But Israel has to defend itself. We can't leave Hamas governing Gaza. They are still holding over 100 hostages, including Americans. I don't know how you can ask any nation to cease fire when their people are being held by a terrorist organization. And a rebuttal to Congresswoman Bernie, yeah. how, how do you? Well, let me, let me just say, first of all, I voted against the authorization to use military force right after the horrific attacks of 9-11. I voted against the Iraq authorization. I said then, and I'm saying now, it could spiral out of control. You see what's happening. It's escalating in the region. We have to make sure that uh, our national security is also protected. And in fact, as this war escalates, as the Arab nations pull back, then what do we have? We do not have a path to Israel's security, nor do we have a path to a Palestinian state. It will spiral out of control like I said it did and would after 2001, and it did. Congressmember Porter, uh, some critics have said you've tried to have it both ways on this. You just heard two different worldviews laid out on this. Uh, where are you, and which one do you agree with? Well, I join millions of Americans um, around the country in mourning what has happened, um, the loss of Israeli lives and the loss of Palestinian lives. Um, and we need, as the United States, to be pushing for the conditions that can get us to a bilateral, durable peace. This is a very difficult situation, and the conditions on the ground in Gaza have changed as the conflict has evolved. And so I have called for a, a permanent ceasefire, and I've pushed and identified with specificity what needs to happen to bring Gaza and to bring the people of Gaza to a better future and to make sure that Israel can stay secure. So I have called for a release for all the hostages, resources to rebuild Gaza, making sure Israel is secure and a free state for Palestinians where they can thrive. So just to be clear, she's calling for a ceasefire right now. You're saying we need to do all this other stuff first, right? 
The parties to this conflict are Israel and Hamas. Ceasefire is not a magic word. You can't say it and make it so. But we have to push as the United States, as a world leader, for us to get to a ceasefire and to avoid another forever war. Alex, Mr. If, you, yeah. if you don't have a permanent ceasefire now, more people are going to get killed and there'll be less security that is even possible for the Israelis and for Israel in the future if we don't do this right now. Mr. Garvey, to, to you, uh, you say that we need to stand with Israel. Um, but there also have been thousands of innocent Palestinians who have died in, in all of this. Does that trouble you? Uh, and is there a threshold where we could see death of innocent Palestinians that means the U.S. should pull back from its support of Israel militarily, financially? I stay with Israel yesterday, today, and tomorrow for whatever their needs are. One of our greatest allies and our greatest ally in the East. That day was atrocious. Terrorists, while Israelis slept, performed atrocities. With common sense and compassion, we realize that we have to give Israel the opportunity to fulfill their sovereignty, to fight back. I think it's naive to think that we can ask our government to tell them or try to influence them to cease fire. If 9-11 became 9-12 and one of our allies came to us and said, we want you to cease fire, what would we have done? We would have looked at them. Thank you for being our ally. But we must control our destiny and our sovereignty. Compassion, yes. Has Israel had ceasefires, short ceasefires? That makes a statement for how they feel about the compassion to All the Palestinians. Right. Thank you very much. Our government's Ms. policy is to support a two-state solution, and Benjamin Netanyahu has totally said no, that that is not possible. And All Alex, right. I think California needs okay. to point. know whether Mr. Garvey supports a two-state solution. What is his vision for the future of the people of Gaza? Do you? I feel it's also naive to think that a two-state solution can happen even in our generation. The difficulty. Even the minds that have been involved with this situation over the years, going back 75 years, know that a peace was broken, and it was broken on the 7th. Yeah. That it won't be until the next generation when we'll be able to talk about that again. Well, those right, that don't believe right, in a two-state solution don't believe in peace and security for Israel nor for Palestine. Okay.